loves yarn. Uh, this is my yarn stash. So clearly it's not me. <laughs> Just kidding. As you can probably see, I love yarn a lot. I knit, I crochet, do various manners of yarn crafting, and I have a lot of yarn. And recently I've started getting a little bit more picky about the types of yarn that I buy at the store. Because when you go to the yarn store, the craft store, you are standing in front of a giant wall of yarn, and they have all these labels on them. And these labels are telling you what's the weight of the yarn, what's the color of the yarn, what dye lot it's from, and what is the yarn made out of. And there are a billion, okay, not a billion, there's a lot of different materials that yarn can be made out of. So thought today we'd use science to decode those tricky labels on yarn. Before I get started talking about the different types of yarn and their composition, I do just wanna put out there that this is not an attempt to like yarn shame anybody if you knit or crochet or buy yarn, buy whatever the heck yarn you want, whatever makes you happy, whatever you can afford, whatever you like to use, any type of yarn is amazing. So to talk about yarn, all yarn is made out of polymers. Science loves polymers. Uh, we've talked about slime, we've talked about cornstarch. It feels like everything is a polymer at this point and that's almost true. Remember that polymers are made up of repeating units of the same thing, also called a monomer. So let's delve a little bit into what are the repeating units that are making up these yarn fibers. There are two types of yarn. There are synthetic yarns, made from man materials and natural yarns made from natural materials. I'm gonna start with our synthetic yarns because that is what you're gonna most commonly see at big craft stores such as Joanne's, Hobby Lobby, and Michael's. So a couple materi common materials for synthetic yarns we're probably gonna see is acrylic, polyester, rayon or viscose, or nylon. And these are all, again, made out of a man-made textile. So in this case, let's, let's talk about acrylic first of all. Acrylic is a polymer, as all yarns are, and it's a polymer made up of a monomer called acrylonitrile. I know that gives you no information about what on earth I'm talking about. But acrylonitrile is a product derived from petroleum, so it is a fossil fuel product, and scientists take acrylonitrile and a, and a couple other chemicals and additives to help it like dye better or have a better texture, and squish them together and make a bunch of chains of acrylic fibers that all form together to form acrylic yarn. Polyester is the same, but just with a different monomer of, it's like terephthalic acid and something petroleum. They have really gross long names, chemicals, it's all stitched together to form the polymers. Rayon or viscose is a little bit different. It's kind of a in-between combination of taking like a wood pulp from bamboo or trees and stuff like that and combining it with chemicals to stitch those monomers together to form long chains. And then you have nylon, which is again a petroleum derived product, 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 but it's supposed to be stronger and more durable. They used nylon to make like parachutes and stuff during World War II and then it ended up making its way into the fashion textile industry in terms of like starting out with like pantyhose which is also why sometimes, like in the past, they're referred to as nylons. Synthetic yarns are all pulled together by the same thread as being made from man-made monomers, stitched together, added with different chemicals in order to get desired characteristics. Let's talk about natural yarns now. These are ones that come from natural materials, whether that be an animal or a plant. So talking about our animal ones, we have like wool from a sheep, cashmere, angora, mohair, llama, alpaca. What unites all of these is that they're called keratinous fibers. So that may kind of sound a little bit familiar because it sounds like keratin, which it's supposed to. And keratin is that protein that makes up our hair and our fingernails. So the monomer for something like this is some lovely Irish wool that I bought in Ireland a couple months ago. So wool fibers are made up of a bunch of proteins all stuck together. The monomer is a protein. The monomer for the protein is an amino acid, if you remember talking about that in our Thanksgiving video. So all of those amino acids form proteins. The proteins also link together in polymers and form something like wool produced by a sheep or the other ones I mentioned like come from like goats or bunnies or llamas or alpacas. A lot of different ways you can get natural yarns. Then you also have your plant-based natural yarns. So for example, this one is actually made out of bamboo. <laughs> made out of bamboo fibers. And this one is made out of cotton fibers. 
And these are composed of monomers of cellulose, which is a type of carbohydrate, like I talked about in my cornstarch video, made up of chains and chains and chains of sugars. So the monomer here is cellulose, but again, cellulose itself is a polymer made up of tiny little repeating units too. As we just talked about, all yarns are polymers, but the type of polymer it is makes vastly different uh, characteristics in a yarn. And yarn makers and manufacturers are aware of this, and this is why oftentimes in stories you'll see blends. So this yarn, for example, is a, what is it? It is a 70% wool, 30% mohair mix, and you may see other crazy mixes as well, including even mixes of synthetic fibers and natural fibers. And this is to get the best qualities for the best yarn for a certain project. So for example, like synthetic fibers are more, typically more durable than natural fibers. Natural fibers may be more breathable than synthetic fibers. Um, some people are allergic to wool. Synthetic fibers often cost a lot less to buy than natural fibers. There's all sorts of reasons why you would want to choose a different type of yarn or a different type of blend in order to get the like color, texture, softness, feel, durability, strength, all those different things that you want in a yarn to do your specific project. There's kind of no right or wrong way to do yarn because there are so many different ways to do yarn. I will say I did mention in the beginning that I'm being a little bit more picky about my yarn choices and recently I've really tended to choose more natural fibers over synthetic fibers just due to kind of their impact on the environment. Synthetic fiber manufacturing uses a lot of chemicals that aren't necessarily good for the environment and shed a lot of plastic microplastics and nanoplastics um, when you, this is, this is wool. <laughs> Sometimes shed micro and nanoplastics into the wash when you wash them or release them into the air. And so just personally for me, I have chosen to stick to more natural materials, but this also doesn't mean that like all natural yarn is automatically better or automatically more sustainable or better for the environment. This is just my personal choice. Please do whatever works best for you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and talking about all the different yarn compositions that exist and hopefully making your trip to the yarn store, if you make trips to the yarn store, just a little less complicated. Today's fun fact that I want us to rate is that wool actually becomes naturally waterproof due to lanolin, a type of fat found within the fiber. Please be sure to drop that rating for the fun fact below. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, go out and buy a lot of yarn and hoard your own yarn stash if that's something you're into. Uh, I post every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey.